let's start off with who was Miss Danielle before insurance? What did, what did life look like? So when I got into the insurance industry, I was really young. So I just turned 21 and, um, you know, at the time I was actually going to cosmetology school and I was working at a winery, um, that was local to my area. And I decided that doing hair probably wasn't the right path for me. And I wanted to find a little something different. So I actually took a couple months off, um, from work and I decided to really decide what my next choice and career was going to be. Um, and I ended up applying for a um, position at an office as a marketing coordinator. And at the time, I didn't even realize I was going to be selling insurance. Uh, it's kind of just like a fancy name <laughs> for an insurance rep. Um, but, you know, I decided to give it a try and it just kind of stuck. And, you know, now I'm going on, this will be my 10th year um, in the insurance industry. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I think a lot of times when I look back at my younger self, if I would have known, I guess, the position I was applying for, I don't think a lot of times people think that insurance is like super sexy or anything. So, um, you know, I don't know if that was would have been something I would have even applied for. So I'm really glad that I kind of took the chance and, you know, dove into it and it ended up being, you know, something I couldn't see myself not doing at this point. Absolutely. So, so 10 years in the industry and you've owned your agency now for how long? Um, about a year and a half. So it's been October of 2020. Okay. Okay. Super exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. You're a, you're an absolute rock star knocking out of the park. Um, for those folks that don't know, Miss Danielle's also a coach with Weaver Sells Academy. So, um, but let's talk a little bit about maybe those, those eight years okay. as a, as a, as a team member working with, working with different agents um, what are some things that you learned during those eight years that you think have transitioned over into agency and have helped you really be a dynamite agent from day one in agency? So I think, you know, so I worked for two different agents before I decided to open my own agency. And I think, you know, at both agencies, the culture of being on a winning team was always there. And I think that's so important because, you know, it's not really just about winning, um, in the sense of sales, but just making sure that you're, you know, protecting your customers and doing what's right for them. And, you know, ultimately that's how you're going to be successful in this career. But, you know, I think just having the passion for the insurance industry, um, also making sure that we're, you know, really helping protect those customers when it comes to, you know, going through in-depth conversations, like, you know, we're not just going to slap on the same coverages that you have at XYZ company. We're going to make sure that you have what you need. We're going to make sure that we go through each and every part of your, your policy. So I think that's one of the big lessons and also making sure that we're protecting people with those financial services is a be a big like key that I think I learned from those agents as well. Okay. No, I, I, I love that. So talking about a winning culture. All right. Let, let's talk a little, let's, let's dive into what a <laughs> winning culture looks like because um, from day one, again, your agency has been crazy successful as a scratch agent. Okay. As a scratch agent, just to give everyone perspective here, I mean, in a super low premium market, she grew over a million in PNC premium and wrote over 300 financial services products, her and her team. So what does that winning type of culture look like? Because I, I think as a business owner myself, sometimes that is, I mean, you have to lay a lot of foundational work and processes and, and dig a lot into your team to, to do that. So what are some tips you could give on how to really start to create and form that winning culture? So I think for me, um, another thing is when I think back to when I was a team member too, and I think also when we talk about winning, we're going to have to at some point talk about how we met and how I, you know, decided to go scratch because I think that's so important. But um, I think back to whenever the thing, like everything kind of changed for me um, as a team member. And I'll never forget it was a, it was January. I cannot remember the year, but um, I was put into this group of other team members that just, they wanted to have agencies and I just really wanted to compete with people. I wanted to like, see how high I could get my numbers. And, you know, we made a goal. We all went around the room and we set really big goals. And at the time, you know, my biggest thing is, yeah, I was doing pretty decent, but it wasn't like I was, you know, knocking it out of the park every single month. And so I said, Hey, I'm going to sell a hundred 
hundred policies this month. <laughs> and everybody looked at me like, what is she talking about? And so, you know, I think, you know, the biggest thing is that you cannot think small you have to really dream big, right? So I'd never done that. I really at the time hadn't even come close to that. But you know what? I made it my goal that month. I committed. And I always have that mindset of like, I don't care how big the goal is. Like, we just got to figure it out. We just got to commit and we just got to do it. And so that month um, was the first month as a team member, I stepped off of internet leads at the time. We had some new people that had come in. And, um, you know, I was really working a lot of in book and I think I sold like 112 12 policies. And so I was so excited to get on the call the next month to say like, oh yeah, I did it. <laughs> and so I think, you know, from there, I just set the bar really high for myself as a team member. You know, once I hit that, I'm like, I can hit that every month. And so then if I wasn't coming close to that, you know, I would just work over, I would work, you know, later nights because for me, it was my new standard. It wasn't even a standard my agent had for me. So when I look at, you know, me coming in as an agent, I think I, I took on that same mindset. I, you know, I said, hey, what, what's the big goal here? You know, what's like the, the top tier of what people, you know, want to hit? And I know we're scratch, but that just doesn't matter. I know we're new. We have a small team, but that never stopped me before, right? Like, you can't put those those excuses in front of you or else a lot of times I think people will use like if they know that there's an excuse and they'll just be like oh well that's why I didn't hit it like no we're gonna hit it and it doesn't matter <laughs> whatever things we may have like against us it's just gonna happen so um I think that it's definitely a mindset piece when you think about building that winning culture um you can't set the bar too low for yourself because even if you set it really high and you fall just a little bit below, you know, you're still going to do some really great things. And I think, you know, making sure you have people that are on board with that mindset too. Like they knew, you know, my team knew when we came in, like, Hey, this is what we want to do year one. You know, this is what, what we want to achieve. And we just, we never thought it wasn't possible. Cause excuses, um, excuses, excuses are easy. And as a business owner, it's really easy to let these obstacles, these excuses get in the way. But I love the fact that you brought up big goals, big expectations, thinking big, because I'm a huge believer in that. Whatever you set your mind to, whatever you tell your team or, or not tell your team, but whatever you work with your team to, to this is the goal that we have. It just so happens as humans that we either barely miss it or we barely achieve it. And so I love that you set big goals from the very beginning. That's, that's huge. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's just, it's a big part about, you know, having that mindset and that culture is setting those goals high and making sure that you stay on track and everybody knows what the goal is. <laughs> 